Okay, um, this is six scale, January 27th. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll go over this again. Uh, so let me open the explanation. Um, so the, the periodic job, we talked last week about um, what has been bothering us with the periodic job, trying to get the answer to the, the HTTP request counts and, and trying to figure out what we should be seeing. So, um, uh, what I did was like Marcelo had that explanation where he talked about, you know, should we prime, should we have to prime our, our job so that we can actually, um, when we measure, um, when we do an increase uh, metric, do we need to have a initial um, VM to prime the, um, to prime the time series database to, in other words, have like a, the first, first item to compare again so that we don't increase, you know, from no value, we have something we increase from, you know, whatever initial value. So we can actually measure this. And so what I found was that, um, that for uh, when I, every time I ran this test, uh, where I created a cluster, I did this like a dozen times, I created a cluster, I ran the, the perf audit test, I would, I would be missing the, the create events, the create requests. Um, and I did this both with um, the, Hard coded range selector to five minutes, which which um, all that does is it increases. So you can see, like I think a good way to look at this is like it increases the amount of time that we can, like the the set that we um, we measure from. So it actually gives us a um, an opportunity to find the data. And this was a, this is actually another problem is that if this number is too small, you can miss it. And that was that was one other problem. And and you need it to be large so that um, you can avoid aliasing, um, which I'll explain in a second. That's another problem. Um, but the, um, so I did this with both five minutes, set the five minutes hard coded and then both, uh, and then the original um, value, which was, a, it was a varying value is based on the amount of time it took to run the test, which is like roughly one to two minutes. So it was kind of in this small range. And no matter what happened, it, it, I never found the, um, the create um, requests showing up. So I added the primer um, and this is a picture of the primer running every time. And you can see there's no create pod um, requests that show up in the primer. And then I run the density test after and I, we do get the create pod count um, that shows up. So that verified to me the theory that like we're, we need to prime this. Um, so that um, so that that was helpful. That was relieving to see. Um, so the I have a whole explanation here as to like um, what's going on. Basically, like um, increase is based on rate, uh, the rate function, and there's a good here's like a little summary. It's like the problem with the first sample, the new metric series, is that the rate is attempting to compare against the non-existent previous value. Prometheus does not have enough data in which to interpolate. So increase and, and rate are both are um, interpolation. So we're like trying to figure out what we expect to happen. Like we're trying to um, look at this set of data and expect how, you know, what would it look like if it was run over this series of times. So we're kind of like, we're kind of guessing that this is what these values are, or this is what these metrics are supposed to do. Um, but we have nothing to compare against. So we absolutely need to prime to figure this out. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's the, that's why we weren't seeing it. So priming does work. The other thing that I mentioned earlier is um, is this problem right here. Why do I see 40 when I use smaller numbers, like so smaller um, interpolation times, uh, smaller range vectors? Um, and I found an explanation for that while I was actually looking for um, the answer to this. And it turns out that um, this is a known issue. It's It has to do with um, signal processing, it's called aliasing. Um, there's a link to it here, um, but you can see here, like this this guy um, who is commenting. I think he put comments on both of these. He's like one of, I think he's one of the core contributors to Prometheus. Um, I saw his name all over the project, but he um, he has an example here. Like so, for example, in the if a if a query you know that's executed whatever at this time <clears throat> only sees um, uh, 580 at, you know, at this timestamp, whatever this, and then 581, um, and that's an increase of one over two minutes and that gets extrapolated 
over four minutes, which is an increase of two. So like you can see like how this gets measured, like it's actually only increase of one, but the value that, that it spits out is two because of um, how the value gets extrapolated. So the recommendation was that if you want to get an accurate value, you have to have a large, a large enough range vector. Um, otherwise you're gonna get these, um, these uh, extrapolated values that are incorrect. Uh, like 40. Um, and that's why, and that's what we observe. Like when we, when we run this at five minutes, it's enough of a, um, of a range vector that it, um, that the extrapolated value is close to what the expected value is. And it's, you know, it comes down to like 21. And in this, to, to safely measure this, um, we need to, our, excuse me, our range vector needs to be longer than our test. It needs to be much longer than our test. Our test right now is like one minute or so. And um, so setting it to five minutes is fine. But when we have longer tests, we, we're gonna need this to be, we're gonna need this to be a little bit longer. We don't want it to be considered short. Otherwise the extrapolated values, um, we can run into aliasing again. So this is something that I would need to watch out for, I think in future tests and we do larger ones. Yeah, that's why the range carry could help with that. So. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. Um, so I tried Marcelo. I tried to do the range query, and I ran into all sorts of problems um, with it, and it just I couldn't get it to work. Um, mm -hmm. And that's saying it can't work, but I had a lot of trouble getting it to work. No, but what, I, what I, problems you do have? I I've been used that for a long time. So, so pretty much whenever I did the increase, ran the increase query. Um, or the increase metric with the range query uh, with when I would set the time, no matter what I would change the metric to, it just failed with the range query. I, it, would, it was just wrong no matter what I, what I did. I wasn't sure what I needed to set it to, but if you have an example of how this would look, that, that's fine, I can try it. But um, I was just kind of stuck with how it should look. And I was kind of satisfied with how this test ran right now, like it worked fine. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm okay, like if we want to change this in the future, but I mean, I think this works fine for now. Yeah, that's, I think that's what I mentioned to you. It's, oh, first of all, sorry, I misunderstood the, the code before. Um, and this works fine. Uh, the only thing that it's what you mentioned depends on the metric that we are collecting. If it's only for a counter, you know, that we do the increase, just check the, the last five minutes should be fine isn't it we won't just want to take you know the what's the uh you know the the, the biggest value that comes from the metric i think maybe the last five minutes might be fine i'm not I'm not really sure so i didn't think very well about that and and uh well i think maybe we can approve that so actually it's it's ready to to be merged isn't it but the, the range query, what it does is we define the exactly interval of the execution. Yeah. So, um, we'll, yeah, it's got a start, start time, stop time, and step, which I think was like the range vector equivalent. Yeah. That's where I was having trouble because increase expects a range vector. So does rate. So, so you, put, you put both. I've, yeah, I've tried it. It just failed. I don't know. I don't know what it, uh, how it should look. If you want to try this, like after Marcelo, I like, I, I'm all for it. Like, I think it, because if we could to get rid of offset, that's fine. I mean, I, it, offset works fine. And just like, it brings us to the, the end of the test that we just ran. And we just look back. I mean, it's a functionally equivalent, but if it's a, um, if we need to like do more advanced things, I, I mean, I could see how ra the range or how the, um, what's it called range query could could help us you know isolate the time frame because yeah, like this has no limit to like the start time that's sort of the problem with this like we're looking five minutes back but we don't say like you know what the exact start time was mm -hmm. yeah basically what range query is doing is for example you take like an interval of 20 minutes okay and then you see like a steps of five minutes and then you get like uh, you know um, you know four you know uh, results, so it will be like a you know um, 
many requests of five five minutes the steps and then you need to you know take the average or the max of this uh results depends on what we want to see here and the steps can be also big so it's you know can be like pretty much what um david did before so then we return only one value um, yeah but the the, yeah. the the query itself it will be with this five minutes interval so we don't yeah. need to change the query so yeah i mean i mentioned the limitations to this to doing this like i i, I put it at the top like the limitations to this that i see is like we we, we first need to find the right range vector which is going to be based on the time of the test and then like that's one concern i have you know using a range query could help there i think um but i mean i think like this is at least a good start mm -hmm. yeah the other fear theory i have which i think goes along the same lines is like how many primers should, like i only do one i only prime one time at the first time that the this when the sweet tart starts and that's it um and we, but we only have one test right now so if but if there's too much time between tests, then we would need another primer. So I'm that's another thing like that I'm concerned well, about. I don't think so. Well, because the, the entry I, exists. That's my, well, that's my fear. It's like if we're only looking at if we're only looking at the period of time. A but it's looking time. at so the entry actually existed though. That's the thing. So it's got something to compare against forever once the entry actually is put into the database. It's it's just for an increase, we have to start from something to calculate what the um the final result is. Like if we don't have something, then it gets weird. But we do have something if it was ever primed. If there was ever a VMI started, uh, then it should remain consistent from that standpoint because that increase means but like if we're talking about uh email creations or whatever the increase could be at the start of the interval let's say there was 30 uh BMI creations from a previous run uh so it, it existed there and then uh when we do our test we'll see a difference between like start at 30 and then maybe there was like 100 or something after that and the difference would be 70. so we know that's what we would get returned so it has something to compare against yeah, I mean, I guess that's true given the fact that, you know, every time we ran the test after the initial one, like I, I would see this like it, it would, after even after I went back like hours later, it was okay. Um, I mean, I, I think I was running the primer, but I, I think we would, we were seeing this earlier, like with our tests, like every time we ran it, you know, no matter when it was, it was working. I don't know. I left it as an open question just in case, like, I, I think it's like, it, it might be okay, but um I don't know. I, I'm just in case, like, I'm, I'm not, there is no question. But um, anyway, so that that's kind of that's where this is, though. But I, I think, like, I think this is good enough to merge. I think this gives us like what we're after in terms of uh, the measurements for for create um, requests. But uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I think range vec range query could be something we we improve on Marcelo. Um, Okay. I mean, do you guys have any other questions about this? Like, does this make sense to you guys? What is what I have here? The only thing I'm uncertain about is that five minute interval. If it should be something yeah. dynamic, where we um, somehow calculate based on the time of the test and just ensure that it's large enough to avo avoid interpolation. I don't know where uh, this interpolation problem occurs. I think it might occur based on the scrape interval it's unclear how, what it's related to. So like, when does the interpolation happen? It's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like, I understand when it would happen for one minute because you had um, like one sample and then it's interpolating, it's trying to interpolate what would happen when you don't have like even more results. Uh, but over five minutes, we, we should have lots of samples. Uh, well, like for the create requests, like, um, where is it? Uh, so if we do, um, so if we, it, our create requests happen, like, um, yeah, I mean, so they, they happen pretty quickly. Like they're, we don't have any samples after like 
a few seconds. Like it's it's done after like maybe the first 10 seconds, I think. So this one minute makes a lot of sense to me why it hits 40 because we scrape, I think every 30 seconds. So most likely yeah. we got one scrape in that minute. Uh, unless everything was time perfect, you might get two. So you only got saying, one. Okay. And uh, since we know the scrape interval is every 30 seconds, it's got to interpolate what the next interval that it doesn't even have would have been. And say, well, it's probably the same as the first. So if we got 20, then it would say that uh, over a minute, that it would be 40. And then for two minutes, let's see, it, it probably looks a little bit more accurate depending on the timing. Yeah, see. And then for, I, I would say once you get past two minutes, it should probably start leveling out, would it not? Yeah. Pretty much uh, like three minutes. But it's like the difference between two and five. I mean, you can see it's three. Yeah, yeah. It should totally stabilize yeah. at five. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's based on the scrape interval. Yeah. I see where you're going with the math on this in between. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know yeah, if it's 30 would... seconds or a minute by default, but that would certainly make sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see. I was thinking it had to do with the amount of time we took or these results were available for, but I guess that, I mean, this is small. So like I was saying, it's like only a few seconds. So yeah, that would interpolate to a much larger value. Hmm. Okay, well, um, yeah. So I guess on this one, I mean, so I mean, I think five, I mean, do you think you think five is okay? I mean, I think five is fine, like for our test. Like, I think it works, but um, it gets weird yeah, when we have um, multiple tests running because yeah. we're not accurately looking. I would try to. How close do we get with the uh, just the, the range of the test? Like, could we just sleep a little longer to give us more, uh, like samples, something like that? Uh, just. I'd like for it to encompass the test or else we're going to have problems that right as we add a new test because they'll, they'll begin overlapping and stuff. Yeah. So, okay. So you're saying like, um, well, so this, so you're saying we want our test to run for this amount of time for five minutes. So we don't. Yeah. If we could get to run for five yeah. minutes, that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, we're like, or, or just make like, sure like at the end that we sleep for uh, whatever duration of time makes five minutes, something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah, if we yep. hard code, we will have problem with tests that takes longer. Yep. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, if if the, the thing that wasn't clear for me, you know, uh, was if actually it takes longer, for example, ten minutes, twenty minutes, would that be a problem? The problem is is lo a lower interval, isn't it? That's yeah, my impression. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. maybe if we make it like a, you know um, configurable again, and we document that, you know, just say uh, if a test takes like less than five minutes, we need to wait at least five minutes to collect the metrics. To doesn't don't have like an interpolation problem, so, and we do that in our test. So. I think that's the right approach to make sure every performance test uh, it takes at least five minutes. What about, well, see, we're, we're going to have tests that will run longer than this. And then we're, well, so what we're saying is we make it dynamic and we just, um, we do a minimum of five minutes and anything longer than that, we, um, we just set this dynamically to that value. Whatever I think the test was. I think uh, for the test to take longer, I, I'm not convinced that we're going to see this problem. And um, I think it's with it's a combination of the ratio between the scrape time and that uh, duration that we're that range that we're looking over. So as that ratio gets like more distance between it, or I don't know how to describe that, but uh, it becomes less and less of a problem. So at five minutes with a 30 second scrape interval. Uh, it seems like it we get pretty accurate results. And I imagine that would continue to be the case uh, as we get further, like longer tests. 
Yeah. I wish I had, I don't have a long test <laughs> to confirm any of this, but I could try the different scrape interval that could at least give me some data. You can create more of yam, so. Yeah, I don't have, well, yeah, I don't have the, that's my problem. That That's, yeah, I can only get to 20. Well, I can only get to like 27 right now. You can, you know, create a VM, sleep, create another VM, sleep. So, yeah, I can do that, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know if you, well, this should test, you need longer interval if you have a problem. But I think, you know, for that, for close, just pure, make it like, a, you know, you know, uh, configurable again for the, the time that the, the tool executed and put like a sleep of, I don't know, four minutes maybe. I, I don't know how long the test runs, one minute maybe. So, and, and then we run out the tool with a longer, you know, interval. And the offset yeah. is also good. So we, we, we use the offset, but I'll bring back the, the range based on the the start and end time that we pass through the audit, audit tool. So let me um, write this down. So, okay, the, one of the things, let, let me look at this based on the, the scrape interval because I want to see, um, I because I could do that just based on the exact test that I'm, that I have there. So like how uh, the scrape interval, Actually, this is very nice. Yeah, this would be very interesting. You know, you put 10 um, seconds there. Yeah, let's and... find that one out. And then the other one is like, I guess I could try with the sleep. You said to create and sleep um, and then see how, well, I guess like this will give you my answer. I mean, well, it doesn't, and I could try the, the, the long test. And then we need the other thing is like um, five minutes. Uh, perfect test. Um, longer than five minutes. But I, I wouldn't hard call the five minutes in the, in the, you know, all this tool. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Like it, it's just, there are limitations as mm -hmm. like I mentioned there, like the, it gives us like for now, for the one test we have, it's fine, but it's not ultimately the, what I think the long term should be. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that's pretty much where we'll get some more answers there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can do that. And let me see what I find. Um uh what do you want to do with this? Like I can do, should we wait? Um, since this is ready, like should we should you want to wait to include it in here or do you want to do this? Um should I do this separately? Do you guys care? I was kind of hoping we could get at least some initial results on this in our job. And I think this will get them. And then I can come back and do this, um, these changes. Do you guys have a preference? I'm, I'm a little nervous about the five minute interval. Um, can we put a sleep cost of five minutes instead of doing the um, kind of the forced look back over five minutes? Like that would so be just, my only comment. It's just to make okay. sure that we, uh, we actually, the test actually um, takes five minutes somehow or we make up the time uh, if we need to. That, yeah, that's the only thing. I'm just nervous about hard coding. Range. Yeah, all right. I can do that. And then, then I think, um, so then we know it's five minutes. And then what I'll do is, cause yeah, I just want to get this like kicked. I want to get like the, I'll start getting some results in that job as soon as possible. So I can do this. I'll do this right away after this meeting. And um, we can start like, hopefully roll this out soon. And then I'll follow, I'll do a follow-up PR with the rest of the stuff in the investigation. Okay. Cool. Good. All right. So let's go to uh, next item. So Fabian mentioned on the mailing list, um, he was asking if we have, um, a general statement of Qbert scale. Um, I kind of wanted to get you what everyone thinks about this. I, I totally agree, like we do want one, um, but I just want to 
see what you guys think because um, scale is like, I think as everyone knows, it's more complicated than just the number of nodes. But um, I mean, do we want to have a general statement like this, like right now, or do we like, you know, basically maybe we can poll the community or something, or do we want to like do some testing, a little bit more testing in our jobs first, or what do people think? Well, this is good, but we need resource for that. So um, uh, we are doing, you know, tests for OpenShift, but I don't know if it can be open or not. But we're, you know, to open that, we need to do Kubernetes tests and get access to resource. So because it, you know this is scale tests. I don't know what would be like the best, you know, something that we can show 100 nodes would be enough. So for now, what do we need? We, we don't have this, you know, uh, it's actually very good to discuss that here. Well, what we can expect, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, mainly Marcel, what I'm wondering is like, I think like there are multiple people who are using Qbert, right? I mean, like, like we're using mm -hmm. it in, internally, like, what is like the scale people are reaching? Like we have a scale number that we're reaching, but our use case is, is different. They, you know, what you guys are doing internally with OpenShift. And so I would imagine you're gonna reach a totally different number of nodes. Like that, that's how I'm interpreting this is like, he's looking for the number of like a general statement saying like Hubert can scale to this amount, you know, like, mm. Yeah. And so my like my concern is that if having a general statement that says like, okay, Qbert can scale to this amount. Um, but well, that I may think, be true. Like but there I think are it's different. Fine to you know Kubernetes says that. Yeah. You know, well, I'm for, not, this, I'm not for this hardware, for this yeah, configuration, you now for this hardware, for this configuration, for this scenario, we can scale like that. And if someone else has something different, it's. You know, there is no way to guarantee, but you know, you just say that for this specific hardware and scenario, we have those numbers, so it will be fine. One, one problem we have with this discussion, I think, is any numbers that we give out sets a bar. And uh, I wanna make sure that we, look favorable like i want it to reflect reality but i want to make sure that you know we're um reflecting like numbers that are good if they aren't good i want to make them good uh like i want to improve performance before we release anything i right. don't want it to uh because it, it impacts like i'll just speak yeah uh, yeah it impacts customers and it impacts our ability to um like market this stuff we're talking about like vendors and things like that. So we have to be careful. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I, I guess, so I guess where I, I mean, at least I'd like to go with this is like, I, I want to keep this in, in mind as like a goal we want to get to. Yeah. And, and, um, but yeah, maybe we just need to pull in Fabian at uh, one point and, and talk about it. I mean, cause we, we don't have like, what's the, I mean, if we were to ask vendor, ask anyone who's using Qubit right now, what and find what the largest scale is, you know? I mean, do we want to use that number? I mean, that's kind of the question I'm asking. Would we use that number or would we wait for us doing these tests that like I have here in the SLO document? Oh, you know, if someone is waiting to run the test that we plan and design, I think yes. But if they run tests that we don't know what they are doing, how they are measuring, and you know what they they are configuring, it's hard to rely on the results. Eh? Yeah, I mean I, that kind of like, maybe. I think it's taking me a while to get to the point. Like we we without tests, like without a way to like empirically measure this like on a consistent basis, I, I find it hard to say like, to make this statement. I mean, would anyone disagree with that? Like I'm always thinking we need the test right. first, right? 
And well, yeah. one of the things that Kubernetes has that it makes things more difficult for Kubert is Kubernetes, we can test at a ginormous scale very quickly by bursting into the cloud. And like the instances that might be used uh, might cost a fortune if you left them online, but uh, just running a hour long performance test um, at periodically, like it's not gonna cost that much. So it's the cost effective way to validate Kubernetes at scale. We don't have a cost effective way of doing that with Kubevert at the scale that we would really wanna be talking about. We have like at Red Hat, there's some internal scaling that's going on and there's huge numbers of nodes and huge results that we get out of these that would be really interesting to, to publish someday if we can but we can't reproduce it because we're borrowing that environment and it's gonna be given back to somebody else eventually, or we, we don't have it forever. And it's also based on downstream product, not Qvert upstream. It's tough. So if we had these tests, if we had so much of tests that we could hand any user and they ran them and showed the results, like would that, I mean, that would probably help us, oh. right? Like that. Yeah. Or no, like what do you think? Well, I think that would be interesting. Uh, so we have a conformance type test for Kubevert that is uh, guaranteeing behavior, like feature behavior. It's not really exercising scale. Um, the idea of a conformance test that uh, exercises scale would be interesting and it could have like multiple variables for it. Like, are we, uh, testing scale at uh, with ephemeral virtual machines, so it would you know let you kind of alter um, or uh, tune the test for your environment what you want to exercise. I don't know. That's not really exactly what Fabian's probably talking about here. He he wants a specific number of nodes and virtual machines that we can run. Uh, like a number that's so tough yeah I mean yeah I mean I think like kind of where I mean I think where we are in this like I, I don't think I I, don't, I think we agree we don't really have this or maybe we're not comfortable in saying this just yet but I mean I think if we if we at least had I think like maybe a few things like one is like I think we need to be able to describe our tests. Like we need to know like, cause it, I mean, scale is all about pressure and the pressure that you're applying in all different ways. If we can describe the different ways that we're gonna apply pressure with our testing, if we have a, a way of consistently applying pressure, no matter what the zone is, we can at least get some numbers. And then I think like, at least like, you know, like, you know, he says like in our, and our, or our CI, like, this would at least give us like some numbers based on our CI, however many nodes, like, you know, I mean, I don't know how we'll be able to at least have get three to, nodes you know, the thousands. Mm. Yeah. But <laughs> well, I don't know, like it, we can at least go somewhere. And then, and then finally, like if we have tests that we feel comfortable with that we can describe, I, like we can at least, like, I would love to try these in, internally and see like, you know, what it is that where our pressure, like basically applying that pressure consistently excuse me, what's the scale that it, it achieves? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, then like I'd feel more comfortable because, yeah, I mean, I think like that's that's the minimum requirement. Before we can get to at least feeling comfortable with this, I think we have to have, we have to agree on this. Like, you know, we have to agree on, I mean, really the tests that are you know, listed here and we have to have mm -hmm. a test framework that's consistent mm -hmm. and we need CI like that's, um, that's running the tests to know that they're applying the pressure that we expect them and working the way we're expecting them. Yeah, so the way that I see that, you know, we, we, we need to have like, we can define a test framework. For example, the cook burner might be a candidate for that um, or not. So we, we can discuss that. Actually, Kubernetes has this own, his, you know, their own tool for that, you know, to run the performance test. When maybe we can, we can discuss to go with cook burner or, even extend Kubernetes tools, you know. What's the what's the Kubernetes tool that does this? It's it a cluster load tool, what they say they call. It's pretty big, so very complex the code. So but uh, what is it called? Cluster what? Cluster load. 
Chu, a uh, Chu of the, uh, you know, uh, number two. Oh, number. And everything together. If if you also try to GitHub that. Yeah. Yeah. Try GitHub. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the perf test. Yeah. I think the first link showed that. This, yeah, this yeah. Oh, it's an also issue. Okay. Anyway, it's it inside like this it's... repository. So, oh, yeah. cluster load too here. Yeah, it's pretty much this one. All the tests there are running, it's inside this. So, um, it, it, they made it to be very configurable. You define the tests only YAMLs. I look at that, but I didn't look with too much detail. So. Is this being actively worked on? Since so, oh. yeah. Since so. Yeah. They, are, they are maintaining that. But I also don't know if they want, they are willing to, you know, accept. So probably we cannot put CRDs uh, you know, based resource inside this because Kubernetes doesn't want to, you know, support 30 part code for that, but they are, they are stressing pods and, and all the other, res, you know, official resource here. And pre, this is pretty much how they are run the, their tests is using, is using this tool. Also this tool, I think also creates the cluster. So it's doing more than running the test. So they deploy, you know, create a Kubernetes cluster in, AWS and run the test, things like that. So it's doing more than we need. Anyway, so it can be this one or the cook burner because I read start. So OpenShift is using cook burner and it's much simpler than that. And uh, I uh, submit a PR to extend it for our case. Oh, okay, so no link. And what I just just to conclude what we were discussing before. Okay, so we can have like a set of tests. Oh, yeah, it's just, so no, we no, can no, have no. a yeah. So we can have a defined set of tests and the tool that we want or that we recommend people to use. But the the test that you know someone else might run and give some limits will be like no official, you know limits that people can provide but the official ones it must be something that we define here you know in the meetings um, and find a cluster to run it in somehow i don't know you know something like that because if we ask someone else it's it's just like an official you know limit that people can can help us with that but we cannot assume that it's as official limits yeah, I think conference. like uh, I think like so what what I, I think like three things like one was like we need to, we need to describe our test so it's clear the pressure we're applying. Right? That's what I want to do here. CI, I would like to verify that the behavior like in the current Kubernetes release like and and that the behavior of our test is what we expect. Like the pressure that we're applying is is doing what we're expecting it to do in the current release of Qvert. Um, so our tests are just like, because we can't really measure scale if we have three nodes. We just want to make sure the tests are, um, and, and things are functioning correctly. Mm -hmm. And then and then I think at that point we can, we give this test, like I, I'll happily do this internally, like run these tests and then come up with some numbers of uh, um, inf information about like how scale is defined, like in my measurement. Mm -hmm. um and, and that would like I, whatever those are like we need to, we need all the measurements that define pressure uh, and then we at the end of it we spit out a number a number of nodes and then um well i mean because well, we need we actually need all of them like we need nodes the number of vms number of vms total number of vms uh this the rate that they're being created like churn and so on like we need like a, we need all those things actually mm -hmm. like we need all the the pressure points um, and that's like our combination. And then, then we can create our little headline like here, like, okay, here's the number of nodes we've seen scale to, but we want to have the detail, like, just like, okay, 
NVIDIA reached whatever this amount of nodes. This is what the summary of their pressure was. We know Qvert can scale to this amount of nodes and you know, given this amount of total pressure. So I, I think, yeah, so we, we, we do need to talk about pressure then at, at some point. Maybe that's something we can do for next week. Um, like Marcella, we had talked about it previously, like in some of the, um, the other Kubernetes scale meetings, like they, they had some stuff that talk about it. We should gra uh, gather all the information that they have about pressure um, that we know of, and we should try and, I think we need to add it to this document. And that's what our test should talk about it and what they should focus on. Mm -hmm. And then we can get this number. Okay, I'm gonna write this as a, so I'll write this here just as a, so let's do, um, okay, we'll do that next week. <clears throat> okay, uh, do you wanna talk about this Marcelo and this change? Um, have yes. you, you had some I've, review on this? Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been actually using that for a while, um, yeah. and I recently created a PR for that. So I extend Kubeburner to create VMs and VMI as well, and also replica set, uh, VM replica set, so it can understand those kind of resource. And so Kubeburner has a way, you know, just to. Um, it was also inspired in the test that you did. Um, you know, Kubeburn has a way to uh, track the pod latency. It's actually create a map and just have some watts. And, and it's like take the, the timestamps of different pods conditions. When it's, for example, initializing the containers, you know, all the, the phase that the pod goes up to it's ready. Um, I pretty much extended that for the VMI also. So actually for the VMs, it's not VMI, but anyway. So um, it, you can create a VM and then we will have like all the detailed uh, latency, the latest breakdown for the, all these steps that goes inside. Um, I Right now, so it's this is another thing that it, maybe we should discuss with David. You know, um, okay, let's let's first describe that then we can, can go for the next topic that I want to talk. So it's pretty much is that. So it's it's creating that and then it it's create, uh, collects Prometheus data. I also included here a file with all the metrics that I think is relevant to analyze. So it will have like, a, you know, VMI uh, metrics and it's the cluster metrics, the TCD metrics, you know, uh, all the contraplane metrics that I think it's important and it's gets from Prometheus. Uh, it dumps, it's done. So the, the way that could burn actually do is dumps to a file or you can push to Elasticsearch uh, this, this data. And then you can have like Grafana connect to the Elasticsearch and then you can visualize the data. So. But you don't need to do that. So you can use Kubernetes to generate the load and see the information in your Prometheus and Grafana, you know, dashboard. Um, it's just a tool to help, you know, to create. It's based on templates. It will be like, I would say, similar what our, you know, perf scale load generator tool is doing, but it's more flexible and it has more, you know, it's easier to create the templates here in Kubernetes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it if you think it makes sense and we can extend it, then I don't see a reason why not to go this way. If people are using it, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to slow us down at all. I mean, it seems like you had some reviews, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if they're open to taking it. Um, What is like this? So you're adding the CRD, you're adding, is this what, um, like, what does this bring us? Like, wh where would you say like this brings us in terms of like our current audit tool? Like, does it um, bring us 
pretty close to the like if could you swap this out right now like for if you had this merged with the um uh for what you have right now in the in the the um the periodic job yes so the the audit tool actually it had like more friendly you know um output from the, the metrics that we are collecting um the cook burner also can collect those metrics but will be like a more um query format you know um the the, the output so it's I, I don't know if we we can you know uh, yeah but uh, i think it would be nice to use that to generate load later so the, the cook burner and then we try as as you mentioned so if we try to you know standardize the tool and the tests and different people can run you know it's you know in a similar way that we are defining things so it would be nice so what about like the tests that we defined um and like the slos here like the um with no not this one um oh, i don't have it the um the the steady state and the um yeah, it's only burst now because the burst test. I don't want to include too much things, you know, at the same time and make the reviewers super crazy with that. But I also have a version with the steady state. So you're also hold on a second. You're you, this this your change adds burst capabilities. It's only like burst, so, yeah. Okay, I see. The steady state. But will, does the does the tool support like doing steady state like tests though? No, I need to extend many I things. See. So yeah. Okay. So that's what I want to say. Okay. All right. So the so if this gives us our framework, and that's fine. Then okay. So we just need to. So you've got this this PR, and then we can add some. Look at adding steady state. I can help with you you with this if you like. If you want me to look at the steady state, I can help do this in a separate PR if you want. Or if you're already looking at it, that's fine too. Yeah, hey, I already implemented that. So, but I just want to submit. Oh, you the, did. Okay. Yeah. So oh, the, great. <laughs> The next PR when it's just won't get you no know, through. So cool. Okay. So I'll give my thoughts real quick. Um I would like to converge on QBurner. If we could get all the functionality that we have today and converge it into the cube burner, um that'd be great. Uh I think uh we just need to see how open that community and how easy it is to work uh in that code base. We're finding a lot of friction, for example, to get the things that we want in uh, that, that kind of serve our purposes. Then maybe we only use QBurner to generate load and continue to use like the audit tool for the, the metrics and stuff collecting, or maybe some combination of it. Um, but like, I like the idea of beginning to converge on this tool. If we can replace maybe just the performance uh, load part, that'd be cool. If we can't, then at least we tried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so Marcelo, I mean, I guess we can. Well, I mean, it looks like you're getting some attention. I mean, we'll see um, when this gets merged. When this gets merged. Yeah. So it's. Seems to me like the Raul is the guy that's responsible for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was you know I just checked the contribution of the you know people on this uh, the cook burner, and seems to me like Raul is ninety nine percent responsible for that. So it's pretty much one one guy. So and he 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 said he's reviewing that he and he's pretty much like uh, very giving a lot of attention. So. How many okay. reviewers do they have? That's another problem when we look at, you know, the health of a project and our ability to get code in. If it's just him and he's a bottleneck for us, that's another problem. Yeah, I'm not really sure of all that. So, can you, uh, Raul? Can you? So sorry, uh, yeah. Ryan. Can you go to the? Yeah, and see the owner's. Oh, file. the point is, there is no owner's file. How are they reviewing? Oh, is he just uh, clicking merge? 
Yeah, oh, so. it's just him. <laughs> oh, it is just him. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. So we're we're totally that. That's my what I'm nervous about is we are uh, at his mercy, uh, for unless we get some kind of um, ability to merge. We can we can talk to him, you know, later. Well, he's sure. from Red Hat, so we can we can discuss that. Yeah. Maybe we can also bring more people. In. I don't know if it's possible. How? Let's see how things are getting merged. Is he pushing a yeah. button? Or yeah, yeah, he's literally pushing a button. Um, yeah. Here's one where another page merged. Let's see. Hmm? No, no, Ray <laughs> merged it though. So. Okay, yeah, I think he's the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so maybe if we we think that it's a good, you know. No good way to go. We can also talk with people, you know, Fabian and and see, you know, how priorities can go for this project, and, or maybe even incubate that inside, you know, Kubevert, something like that. I mean, your code, like that you've written here, is this? Um, I mean, you what ha like? I don't know what it's on this I'm reading, but. Yeah, this is the matrix that I think it's relevant for us to just to, to analyze. And this is the configuration of the coop, you know, the coop for density. It will have like global configuration to write the data to files and a job. I, I have two, three jobs here. One, it's only an idle job that I call it will just delete previous data and wait for five minutes. Then it comes the Kubevert density that creates virtual machines with this rate of 20 queries per second. Wait for all the virtual machines being the ready state. And, and also I wait 20 minutes just to leave them running for 20 minutes to see. And you see this uh, object replica, it's an environment variable. You just export the number of flat replicas that you want to create. And then the delete job will delete everything and just wait five minutes after deleting that. So just, of course this can be configurable also. So, and um, I, I was doing like much larger, you know, test. That's why waiting this amount of time makes sense for me. This is the, the template. This is a very simple template with ephemeral, you know, a disk. Um, but we might want to test it also with, um, you know, real PVCs and maybe more network. Because as we saw in some other experiments, PVCs and, net and more network um, NICs potentially increase the number of API requests and overload the system. Um, and it's something that we can catch, you know, get in the performance test when we test this kind of thing. So this looks like the. Um, I mean, this looks like it's duplicating what you've already done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this is looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it has a, a big overlap. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we were. I didn't realize it was only this. I thought this what this had a community associated, like a larger community associated with it. I didn't know it was. It was yeah, just, I thought um, also. Yeah, but it seems that yeah. it's very few. I mean, okay. I mean, I think like, it, I mean, let's see where you go with this. How this PR goes. I mean, I think like when I guess Marcelo is like. If we already have like a bunch of stuff in for load generator, you know, in in Qvert three, I, mean, I, I don't think it's that bad to continue there. I mean, just because the and see how this the community here grows maybe a little bit more because we. I mean, I think it's you have this PR open. I think 
like continue with it but i mean it might be that um we might need to like see where this goes i mean do you have like you, you what what's like missing on the uh, on the qvert side like you have here like have you what about like the steady state like right now we have a burst test right on the qvert side we have create 100 vms the density test basically is like a burst mm -hmm. test there's there's no we don't have a steady state test I mean, you don't you don't have code for that, right? On the keyboard side. No, but it, we could have, yeah. Okay. No, I well, I'm I'm just asking, like the. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see where this goes then. I mean, I don't like want to waste the effort that you've already done. Let's see where this goes, and let's see, um, let's see if we see some things pick up there as we as there's you have these contributions. Mm hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Uh, do you guys have any other final thoughts before we conclude? Okay. That's it. Okay, See you all, all next right. week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Catch you later. Bye. Bye bye.